If you have any school-aged kids, you might be looking for some quick and easy snack ideas. So here with some tips is registered dietitian Emily Kaminer. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. So this is something a lot of families struggle with. You're constantly trying to come up with something. You want to keep it novel, keep it interesting, but you don't have a lot of time. So let's just start with snacks in general. Most kids want snacks. Most adults want snacks. It is very important, isn't it, to snack? <laughs> it is. It's so important for kids to snack. And the most important reason is that 30% of the calories that most kids get is from snacks. Okay. So if they're eating snacks that are mostly junk food, they're missing out on all the important nutrients that come from that 30% of their calories. That's a third of their calories each day coming yeah. from snacks. So let's talk about great snacks versus not so great snacks. Yeah. The ones people want most often are not the greatest. So I always say when you want to find a great snack, think of trying to hit a trifecta. You want to have healthy fat, mm -hmm. fiber, and protein. Okay. Another way to look at it is trying to combine two food groups. So let's say you're like, oh, I'm really hungry, I need a snack. You want to try to put together two food groups. So maybe you want Greek yogurt mm -hmm. and fruit. Not just fruit. Fruit would be the carbohydrate, mm -hmm. and the Greek yogurt would give you the protein and a bunch of other good nutrients. And that's going to keep you full longer, so you're not going to need another snack immediately, right? Right. So kids have smaller tummies, right? So they don't eat that much at each meal, which is why then they become hungry. Mm -hmm. So snacks allow you to stay full. The reason that we want snacks at school time especially is that they use this blood sugar to help their brains for learning, sure. memory, thinking, behavior, being able to pay attention. And so it's really important for them to maintain their blood sugar throughout the day. Yeah. And so by giving them snacks, we can help them do that. What kind of impact does that have on a kid, that, that brain food aspect? Something from the vending machine, some kind of salty, very processed snack versus a well-balanced mix of protein, carbs, and healthy fat. Right. Well, what the research has shown is that the ultra-processed foods that you might get from the vending machine actually cause this food preference for kids mm. that alter, ultimately will impact their overall nutrition for life. Wow. So it's really important to start adding these nutrient-rich snacks early on so that they can have a flavor for them. Yeah. But in general, these snacks that don't have fiber, don't have protein, and probably don't have healthy fats aren't also helping maintain their blood sugar. Sure. So if you just eat pretzels, for example, you probably might have your elevated blood sugar for a short period of time, but then it's going to drop again very quickly, and it's not satisfying. Yeah, you get that crash. Right, so it's fairly simple. With the pretzels, have some peanut butter. If it's a nut-free school, add sunflower seed butter. Add other types of seeds, other types of snacks with it that can combine or possibly adding some of these other options that I gave that might give another opportunity to add that fiber. Yeah, so let's talk about those. So often the, the advice is whole foods, stay away from you know the inside of the grocery store, the packaged items, yeah. but these are some packaged items and they're not too terrible. Exactly, there's some really decent options out yeah. there. I know my kids particularly really have always loved those pea uh -huh. protein, they're, they're, they're shaped like a pea, they're yeah. crunchy like a chip, and they actually provide protein and fiber and a little bit of salt, and still you get enough portion size that it feels like snacking. Sure, what else do we have over here? So we've got some other cruncher crackers. I say always look for three grams of fiber when you're looking for a cracker or a snack that's crunchy like that. Okay. Then you're gonna get a benefit of the fiber that's gonna really help maintain blood sugar. And then I put the crunchers there as well because they're made with olive oil mm -hmm. other, other, over other unwanted fats that we're trying to avoid. Yeah, any tips for parents with really picky eaters that just don't like a lot of things? I always say start with something that they already like. So make it sort of fun. So for example, let's say they've never had a whole wheat pita. Mm -hmm. I try to put sauce and cheese on it and make it a pita pizza. Okay. And you start slow with something that they're accustomed to and then grow from that. Sure. You know, you're not gonna add a bunch of vegetables to their pizza right away, but you might add one at a time. Not a full kale salad on day one. Exactly. <laughs> for snacks, try to add, for example, maybe they already like Cheerios. So in their Cheerios, you're going to make a little snack bag, and maybe you're going to add a couple sunflower seeds, and maybe a few dried fruits that they've never had so that they can slowly grow to like some other ty types sure. of foods. Great advice and some great ideas here to get started right away. Emily Kaminer of Diet Detroit, thank you so much for being here today. So nice. Really appreciate your time. Yeah.